Hi everyone, I'm Amy and I'm home in my kitchen doing some cooking. I'm so happy you're here because I love cooking with other people and I hope you'll follow along and cook with me. Um, it's a crazy in my house. We have five people all working from home, so it's going to get a little loud, possibly, maybe, maybe not, but I'm going to keep cooking. So um, anyway, what I'm making today is a toasted toasted onion white bean dip. And I just came up with this because I have all of the ingredients at home and I was looking for something kind of healthy to make because I feel like I have done nothing but eat sort of unhealthy. So the first thing I'm doing is toasting my onion. And you know what I noticed? I opened, I cut into this open, this, I cut into this onion and I noticed that it's like not good on the inside. And that happens. This is what this looks like. There would, there's no way I would have known looking on the outside. It happens, it's not that big of a deal. What you do is just cut around it. So I'm gonna peel what I can. And it doesn't, you know, having good knife skills for cutting an onion for this application doesn't really matter because it's all gonna go in a food processor. So this is the offending part of the onion, the brown part. We definitely don't wanna eat that or cook with it. So I'm just gonna cut it off and I'm gonna throw it out. Easy as that. There's a little bit on this side too, so I'm gonna do the same. And then I'm just gonna roughly chop all of this up and I'm gonna put it in the oven. So let's see. Yeah, this is, this is the bad part. So I'm gonna not take any chances, peel that away, and then this part's fine. So if that happens to you, not to worry. It'll, it'll, it'll be fine for cooking. It's a little bit less onion, but doesn't really matter. I mean, making a dip like this is really just sort of intuitive cooking. It's not really following a recipe because it'll turn out no matter what. So I'm gonna put this chopped onion on a baking sheet and I'm gonna drizzle some olive oil and sprinkle a little salt, give it a little toss. And while I'm cooking with my hands, I wanna talk a little bit about cooking with your hands and a little bit of the sanitary uh, implications of what that means. Hold on, let me get this in the oven first. So I always wash my hands before I cook anything. It's really important whether it's now or whether it's in the future, I've always done that. You always wanna start with clean hands. When you touch any kind of meat, you always wanna wash your hands too. But remember, if you're cooking anything, it the heat of the oven or whatever you're using to cook, whether it's a grill, whatever on the stove top, it always is gonna cook out all the germs. So just keep that in mind. If you're cooking something raw and serving it, or you're not cooking something raw, if you're preparing something raw and serving it, you always wanna have the cleanest hands possible. So the onions are in the oven and they're gonna cook at 350 degrees, about 20 to 30 minutes, but I already made some in advance so we can get a, go ahead with the dip. I think the mailman's here. I'm sure you can all relate to that. Anyway, these are my onions. They're really nice and toasty brown. And I'm going to pop these into my food processor. Get that out of the way. And along with that, I'm going to put my white beans. This is a can of white beans that I just had in my pantry for a long time. I drain them and that's what that looks like. And then I'm going to put in some lemon. Uh, there are a few seeds in here, so I'm just going to get these out. One thing I like to do when I'm cooking with lemon is to try and get as much of the zest in as possible too. I'm not going to do this for the dip but I am gonna do it for the parsley olive oil drizzle that I'm gonna put on top. Uh, we have a question, Mom. Oh, great, what's the question? Who's, 
<laughs> What's the question? Who's asking? Uh, Gabriella wants to know if you hey, use Gabriella. them from a can or dry. Hi, Gabriella. Happy baking. Happy cooking. Um, I am using a can of beans today. I actually prefer to use dry beans and soak them overnight, but I didn't have time. <laughs> And I wanted to use up this can of beans. This is like so super easy. It's literally, I'm going to make this and I'm going to have it for lunch. So either way is fine, but canned is perfect in a situation like this. And thank you for asking. I'm going to put in a little pinch of salt. And then I'm going to put the lid on. Will, do you want to come around and sure. see what this looks like? So while this is whirling along, I'm going to add a drizzle of olive oil. Let's take a look. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Now, I think this is a little too thick. I mean, it's just a tiny bit too thick. So I'm going to put in a little water. You don't want to put in too much olive oil because it'll be a little greasy. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of water. I find the water gets it really creamy, something that olive oil can't really do. So this looks really nice to me. I'm going to give it a taste. Check it for seasoning, which means salt. O Owen says he loves the show. <laughs> Owen, but are you making it? Are you actually cooking along with me? <laughs> I'm going to add a pinch of salt. <laughs> okay. This is really good, by the way. The combination of toasted onion and white bean. Amazing. You know, I think a lot of white bean recipes have garlic in them, roasted garlic. That's where I kind of got this idea to substitute the garlic for the onions. That's perfect. Okay, so the bean dip is done. And the combination of toasted onions, which is so easy to make, and the beans is like a really delicious dip and it's super healthy. So let's move on. This is most of the recipe, by the way. How easy is that? Um, now we're gonna do something really cool in a mortar and pestle. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with a mortar and pestle. It's really just, it's sort of like a food processor that you do by hand. And the, this is called the pestle and this is called the mortar. And what happens is whatever you put in here kind of gets ground between this and this and it makes like a really nice fine paste. So I'm gonna do something simple. I'm gonna put a little olive oil in and I'm gonna put some parsley in. And then I'm gonna put some lemon zest in and a little salt. This is very satisfying. I love doing this. It's really pretty too. And you know, the outside of the lemon is really, really flavorful. It's like all of the flavor of the lemon, but not the sour part. You wanna zest just the yellow part and not this white part. This is called the pith and that's really bitter right here. So between the juice and the outside, it's great. Uh, we got another question, mom. Okay, well, what's the question? Chadwick Boyd is wondering. Chadwick, <laughs> hi. He's wondering if he doesn't have one of these, what can he do? A mortar and pestle. That's a great question, Chadwick. And a lot of people don't have this, but you can order it. You can order a mortar and pestle really anywhere where you would buy housewares like Amazon, for example, or Bed Bath & Beyond. But what I normally do when I'm cooking and I'm home alone is I'll take all of this nice bean dip out and I'll plate it. I'll wash out my food processor and then I'll ground up my olive oil and my and my herbs in a food processor and I'll just pulse it so that it doesn't really get finely mixed like my bean dip it just gets a little bit chopped up 
Another thing you can do is just chop up the herbs really fine, right on your cutting board, and then stir them into some olive oil. That's probably the easiest way to do it. All you need is a knife for that. But the more I mix this around in my mortar and pestle, the more kind of viscous it gets, and it's really nice. Here, I'll show you. Isn't that pretty? It becomes like a green olive oil. In fact, I'm gonna add a little more olive oil to this because I love this green color so much. I think when I put this together and I drizzle this on top of the beans, what I really want is this green olive oil. Um, Chadwick wants to know if you could use limes if you run out of lemons. Great question again, Chadwick. Um, yeah, you can definitely use limes. I even think you could use oranges. Any kind of citrus would go really nice with this. And while we're talking about substitutions, if you don't have parsley, you could use any soft herb. And when I say a soft herb, I mean like dill, any herb that's literally soft to the touch. And a good comparison of a soft herb versus a more woodsy herb is um, thyme and rosemary are kind of the woodsier, harder herbs. They're harder to make kind of a nice drizzle like this, but a soft herb like a tarragon or chives or parsley work really well, and you can really combine them too. I mean, I think like a mixed green herb drizzle on top would be delicious. All I have today is parsley, so parsley it is, but I tend to really like to um, combine all of my herbs. Okay, let's see how this tastes. I'm checking it for salt. I didn't add any lemon juice. I just added the zest and I'm kind of taste it to see if I want to add a little bit of the juice. And I definitely do. Okay. Something that I always have when I'm cooking is a whole bunch of tasting spoons. And for obvious reasons, you only want to dip once when you're tasting. And it's important to taste as you go when you're cooking, especially when you're making something like this that doesn't have a lot of cooking involved. I'm just going to do a squeeze of lemon. I don't want this to be too thin. So I got a seed in here. Let me get that out. There we go. I'm going to give it a, another stir and then I'm gonna taste it with a clean spoon. And this is perfect, mm, amazing. So we have our parsley drizzle, we have our toasted onion and bean dip. I have some toast from my bread that I made a couple days ago. And a really good tip when you're baking bread, and I bake bread almost every day, anything that's left over, you just slice it up and you toast it. And then you have toast. I mean, toast for hors d'oeuvres or snacks, not toast with butter. It's always nice to have something. And if I'm not making it into little pieces of toast like this, I'm putting it in the food processor and I'm making homemade breadcrumbs. So you will never, ever, ever run out of things to do with your bread. I highly recommend it. So I'm gonna plate this. I have, um, I decided to do all of my cooking today with my enamelware. Actually, Chadwick kind of got me thinking about that because enamelware, it's sort of, it's, it's something that I love. It's lightweight, um, it's vintage. I buy enamelware anytime I go into a vintage store, a houseware store, which my family will tell you I'm obsessed with and I've dragged them into more vintage stores than, they would like to admit <laughs> because they come with me and then they just sort of sit in the corner while I shop and act like five-year-olds. <laughs> um, so I got this at a vintage store in Maine and I love it. So I'm going to pour this in and the funnest part about making hummus or bean dip is you get to play around with the swirl and that's the presentation. And I actually learned how to make a really nice swirl from Mike Solomonov, who is the chef and owner of Zahav in Philadelphia. And he actually owns a ton of restaurants in Philly. I can't even keep up with all of them, but his first and his biggest is Zahav. And he makes the most incredible hummus in the world. And you can find his recipe online. 
Um, but he taught me how to make a swirl, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. You go like this, you go around, and you sort of 